Hello everyone, this is Vaseem from Edureka and I welcome you all to this session in which I am going to talk about neural networks in Python. So before we begin, if you are new here, don't forget to subscribe to Edureka for more exciting tutorials and press the bell icon to get the latest updates on Edureka. Also if you are looking for a certification program, the link is given in the description box below. So let's go ahead and take a look at the agenda for this session. So firstly I am going to explain what exactly are neural networks and then we are going to take a look at the components of the neural networks one by one. And then we'll talk about activation functions, feed forward and back propagation, why it's needed and why do we do it in neural networks. Then we'll be taking a look at what exactly is a perceptron and training neural network using Python. So I hope you guys are clear with the agenda. Also tell us in the comments guys, what do you think about Python programming? I mean, many of you must be beginners or you know already been working on Python programming language. So tell us your story, how you started with Python and what made you switch on Python and what projects are you working on right now and if you are feeling any difficulties with any projects tell us in the comments and we'll try to help you guys and you can also tell us what new topics or you know concepts that you want us to cover so that it will help you to get better at python programming so moving on let's talk about what exactly is a neural network so neural network is a simple concept to understand guys i mean if you look at the tutorials that you find online or on youtube or on internet you will find a simple analogy regarding how the neurons are connected to the brain and it often confuses the beginners who does not know anything about the neural networks because it's not necessarily something that everybody is aware of. So simply I'm going to tell you to focus on the mathematical aspect of it. So let's say we have some input values. There is a large connected network which is passing that input value through layers and there is some computation happening and we are getting the desired output. So let's think of it as a network where everything is connected and there are layers and neurons. We'll call them neurons for now. And you know the data points inside each layer. And there are functions, activation functions, you know, computations happening, or summation functions. At the end of the day, you're getting the desired output from that particular network. In hindsight, there is input going inside the network and you're getting an output. So it is as simple as that. And now in the figure also you can see that there is a network where nodes are interconnected and there are several layers which basically roughly depicts a neural networks similar to a brain as well. So that's why most of the people would talk about this analogy. Now the importance of neural network in deep learning is quite immense guys. It basically narrows down the human intervention to a bare minimum and is pretty efficient with multi-dimensional data. Uh, we'll talk about that later on. Speeding up the process with high efficiency is just one of the advantages of the artificial neural networks. And also, I forgot to tell you guys, neural networks are also known as artificial neural networks. Now, let's try to understand neural networks with the perspective of how it is advantageous and why do we actually need deep learning and neural networks. So, machine learning was a major breakthrough in the technical world. It led to the automation of monotonous and time consuming tasks. It helped in solving complex problems and making smarter decisions. However, there were few drawbacks in machine learning that led to the emergence of deep learning. So there are a few pointers that I want to discuss. First is it was unable to process high dimensional data. So this was what I was talking about. So machine learning can process only small dimensions of data that contain a small set of variables. And if you want to analyze data containing hundreds of variables, then machine learning cannot be used. There is one shortcoming that deep learning is actually fulfilling. And next one is feature engineering is manual in machine learning. So consider a use case where you have 100 predictor variables and you need to narrow down only the significant ones. Do this you have to manually study the relationship between each of the variables and figure out which ones are important in predicting the output. And this task is extremely tedious and time consuming for anyone including a developer. The next point is it was not ideal for performing object detection and image processing. So since object detection requires high dimensional data being you know the images and frames that you have and you know all the cascade classifiers the XML files these are all high dimensional data and machine learning cannot be used to process the image data sets. It is only ideal for data sets with a restricted number of features. That's where deep learning comes into the picture. Fraud risk manager and a data scientist at PayPal K Wong quoted at one time like what we enjoy from more modern advanced machine learning is its ability to consume a lot more data and the layers and layers of abstraction and be able to see things that a simpler technology would not be able to see. 
even human beings might not be able to see. So clearly, a simple linear model is capable of consuming around 20 variables, let's say. However, with deep learning technology, one can run thousands of data points. So that is exactly what we need with deep learning and neural networks is the center point of that. Now, neural networks as a whole is a complicated concept to understand. We can simplify it like there is an input data going inside a bunch of layers. There is a computation in the calculations happening using some functions and we are getting the output. But it is not as simple as that to understand how it works. We'll have to take a look at the components, you know, basically the layers, how many layers are there, what kind of activation functions we are using and how are we, you know, updating the weights and what are the bias and everything. So these are the components that we have to talk about. So the key components that build a neural network includes an input layer. There will be hidden layers, a bunch of hidden layers where the computations or the calculations will be happening. There is an output layer where we get the output, the weights and biases associated with the input values. There is an activation function and then there is a loss function as well. So let's discuss each of them one by one. So first of all, I'm going to talk about what exactly are layers. So a layer in neural network is basically it's storing the neuron before passing it on to the next layer. So a neuron is basically the input point. A layer is basically storing that particular neuron before passing it to the next layer. And each neuron is a mathematical operation that takes its input, multiplies it by the weight associated with it, and then passes the sum through the activation functions to the other neurons. And there are basically three types of layers, as I've told you. There is an input layer, hidden layer, and an output layer. So as the name suggests, the input layer accepts all the inputs provided by the programmer or the user. And the hidden layer between the input and the output layer is a set of layers known as hidden layers. And in this layer, computations are performed which results in the output. So we are getting the results from these hidden layers. And whatever results that we are getting, I mean the inputs go through a series of transformations via the hidden layer where we get the output. So it finally results in the output and the output is delivered by the output layer. So now we're going to move on and learn about what exactly are weights and biases and why are we using them in neural network. So to talk about weights and biases, one of the main components of neural network are weights and biases. So what exactly are weights? We can understand weights as a value associated with the input that basically decides how much importance that particular input has to calculate the desired output. Basically the priority of you know the input. And the weights are optimized during the training phase, which we'll discuss later on while training the model. And to understand this with an example, let's say we have a vintage car. Now, to calculate the price of a vintage car, there would be two very essential factors. First is how old is the car or which model? I mean, what year the model was made and how much has it been driven? Like how many miles are there on the car? So the weights would have a negative relationship with respect to the year it was made because the older the model was made, the higher the price would be and similar for the number of miles associated with the car. The less the number of miles, the more the price will go up. Now to understand bias, it is simply a constant value that is added to the weighted sum of inputs to offset the result. We'll understand this bias when we're taking a look at the neural network using Python guys, so don't worry. And we're gonna take a look at the activation function and understand why it is used in neural network. So what exactly is an activation function? An activation function is basically normalizing the computed input to produce an output. There can be various activation functions like there can be a sigmoid function, a linear function, there are softmax and RELU. So these are the activation functions that we can use. So in our model, we're gonna use the sigmoid function guys, probably because it has a threshold value from zero to one. So there can be only two outputs, either zero or one. So that is why we're going to use sigmoid function guys. And if you want to learn more about sigmoid function, we have a tutorial on our YouTube channel that you can check out. You can also check out the gradient descent algorithm or tutorial that we have on our YouTube channel. And to understand, okay, let's try to understand the whole process in a systematic way. So let's say the input values are I1, I2, I3 and so on. And there is a subsequent weight associated with them, which is W1, W2 and so on until Wn. And the weighted sum will be I1, W1, I2, W2 and so on. After adding the bias, the weighted sum would become I1, W1, I2, W2 and so on plus bias. 
Now the output will be computed using the activation function. So the output would be sigmoid function on our calculated sum or calculated weighted sum. So it would look somewhat like this. So basically sigmoid function is the output is equal to 1 by 1 plus e to the power minus x and we will learn more about this when we will train the neural network. So now we'll talk about the next step that we have in our neural network. So far we have discussed the layers, the weight associated with the input and how the output is calculated using the activation function. Now to implement a neural network there are two steps involved. First is feed forward and then there is back propagation. So what exactly is feed forward? In a feed forward neural network the weights are taken randomly and the output is calculated using the activation function. These weights are actually taken at random are going to be optimized later on during back propagation. So the entire process of the input going through all the layers and getting the output is feed forward. Now on the other hand back propagation is the process where weights are updated to minimize the calculated error. Error is nothing but you know the actual output and the predictor output is compared and the difference between both of them is the error. So we have to minimize that error for that we use back propagation. Now to do the weights are basically updated using the gradient descent algorithm. That's why I was talking about so you can check it out on our YouTube channel. So I'll talk about the flow how we have set the flow right. So we take the inputs we assign the bias and the weights associated with them and we find the error in prediction after you know applying the activation function on the output. So the idea to minimize the cost function or the error we do it by using the gradient descent algorithm and we repeat the training phase with updated weights until we get the lowest error or the lowest error in the prediction and after that we make predictions. So that is how the whole process works and to understand how we calculate the error we, we can take an example you know in the example we'll be taking a look at how mean squared error is taken and weights are updated using the gradient descent algorithm where we have x is equal to input the f of x is the output based on x and lr is the learning rate and we are going to find the derivative of f of x and for that we'll have three derivatives we're going to apply the chain rule and there'll be three derivatives and if you take a look at the gradient descent algorithm the formula how we calculate the derivative you'll understand that. So we're going to take it up to the actual implementation of neural network using everything that we have discussed so far. So let's take it up to Jupyter Notebook guys and we're going to see the practical implementation of how we use a neural network. So in this notebook I have written down the logic for uh, you know how we are going to implement a neural network. So first of all we're going to need a few components which is going to be nothing but inputs you know the input features and they're going to be the output values and there'll be weights the bias and we're going to use the gradient descent algorithm so we're going to need the learning rate and derivative of the sigmoid function and of course there'll be sigmoid function as the activation function. So initially I imported the numpy library and now guys I must tell you before we begin with this you know implementation this is just to make you understand how it works. So not necessarily you have to deal with you know neural networks like this. We have TensorFlow, we have scikit-learn where you can just you know uh, import a module and using TensorFlow there is you know you can design a model you know sequential models with a lot of layers and everything and there you have the activation functions and then you can also calculate the loss and there are metrics such as accuracy and everything. So that is what you will use to make it easier for you. This is just I'm telling you guys to understand how it really works. So we have the input value all right. So we have an array with these four values in shape four by two and after that we have the output values in the output array and of course we have four values zero one one zero and this is in shape we have reshaped into four by one and then we have the weights which is none other than uh, 0 0.1 and 0 0.2 two weights associated with this particular program and then we have the bias is equal to 0 0.3 and then the activation function is the sigmoid function which is we have you know implemented using the numpy and uh, numpy exponentiation now of course and this is minus x over here this is you know how you implement a sigmoid function using numpy and then there is a derivative of the sigmoid function which we are going to use for a chain rule which will you know help us uh, in the gradient descent algorithm or the formula and then comes the part where we have the code where we are going to update the weights so for example the epochs are in the range 10,000 and then the input array. So there's a weighted sum. So this goes on with the flow that I have mentioned right. 
first of all you have an input value then you calculate the weighted sum add bias to it so this is basically the weighted sum where we have added the bias the weights everything after that we have the first output okay so this is the feed forward the first output is our sigmoid function using we are getting and after that we will have a set of values for first output which we can compare with the desired output there we will have a error basically the difference between both of them so we are calculating that using mean squared error the statement that we have with numpy is calculating the mean squared error and after that we have the first derivative these derivative values we are practically calculating to incorporate in the gradient descent algorithm so first derivative is the error this is the first derivative in the chain rule then we have the second derivative which is basically nothing but uh, the uh, derivative of the sigmoid function then we have the final derivative which is the dot product of the input values where we have transposed the input values before it was in the shape for 4 by 2 now it will become 2 by 4 and after that we update the weights using the equation which is nothing but this is x is equal to x minus lr which we have set as 0 0.05 and this is basically d by dx of f of x all right so this is the final derivative that's why we have calculated all of these and after that we update the bias as well using the same formula and now if i run it so the weight value is minus 0 0.4 and 11.8 and the bias is minus 5.6 so now to get the prediction done we will check it for the new value so we have an array the input value is 0 and 1 so for this 0 and 1 the target output is 1 so we will see how far off our result is it is basically 0 0.9979 so it's pretty accurate guys now we'll check for other values as well so let's check for 0 and 0 so it should be around 0 0.003 which is almost uh, equal to 0 again so this is how we can implement a neural network in python so this is a basic implementation guys so instead of using a sigmoid function in this you know activation function what we can do is we can use a linear function there are other options as well and you know that we can use a soft max function so this is it guys with this we have come to the end of the session and i just want to tell you guys this is basic implementation of neural networks that you can find so if you really really want to work with neural networks this is just a very basic example that i've shown you what you can do is you can go to tensorflow official documentation or check out our youtube channel and you can find a lot of tutorials there where we have image classification you know basic image classification how you can just get mnist data pre-process the images and feed the input into a network where you can identify or classify the images into different classes and that's a very basic example again Tell us in the comments guys if you have any questions and if you want us to cover any particular topic or a project that you're working on or if you're finding any difficulties in that particular project you can tell us in the comment section below and with this we have come to the end of the session if you are new here don't forget to subscribe to edireka for more exciting tutorials and press the bell icon to get the latest updates on edireka and do check out our verification program the link is given in the description box below until then keep learning stay home and see you guys in the next session Thanks a lot. I hope you have enjoyed listening to this video. Please be kind enough to like it and you can comment any of your doubts and queries and we will reply them at the earliest. Do look out for more videos in our playlist and subscribe to Edureka channel to learn more. Happy learning!